Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In this episode we're going to sort out all of our missions around Mars and the order of operations is sort of fluid at this point. But I think first we'll be focusing on this tug and getting the Mars Quest module probe to dock with the Mars station as we have it right now. So we've got this maneuver set up and then we've got another maneuver after it to correct inclination. We align both things up with the station module, the pioneer module first, and then we'll rendezvous them together and then handle the docking bit. So uh, with that, let's just RCS on and turn. We also have to keep an eye on MTV2, uh, especially the water situation. Gotta remember that it's not recycling the water if we're not paying attention to it. So we'll need to pay attention to it and uh, make sure it does that part. So I can't be away from it too much, uh, lest we uh, cause problems for that end of things. But anyway, we can do this maneuver now. This is boosting our periapsis up to meet the periapsis. Well, actually meet the orbits, not really the periapsis of the target. And then this will be the inclination correction. And that will happen all the way down here. It's a mess of lines. What can we do? Uh, but, I mean, well, I could clear it up, I guess. But I think I sort of like it. Anyway, uh, add that. It seems like this is the next thing to do anyway. Okay, so we'll follow it through. It looks busy. Look how busy Mars is. You never see Mars this busy. Okay, that'll do for now, I think. Um, we can now turn to the quest module. Let's delete that one. And yeah, I, I'll just leave it without any maneuver for now. And let's turn to the quest module. Basically, I want to do everything before we have to pay attention to Mars Transfer Vehicle 1, which is, of course, meeting up with Earth in 124 days. We have a nominal uh, Mars to Earth transfer in 514 days. And we'll have to try and make that uh, quick return back, I think, for the sake of... Well, I guess we could use a supply vessel to top off the food if necessary, but... Okay. So this is going to be headed up to Apoapsis and do a maneuver to boost its orbit and then it'll do a similar inclination correction there but it's not too far off from the Pioneer module's orbit. The Pioneer module was delivered on our first transfer window of course. No, oh, I shouldn't have used those. I should have just used RCS. Oh well. They have limited ignitions, so. And this thing's RCS is pretty powerful since it's meant to turn a station. Okay, okay, don't follow it, don't follow it. Let's just go over to that ascending node. Um, maybe we could finagle something. That's the tug. Let's see if... Well... I think we should do that part with the tug. With all this stuff around, though... I don't think we'll be losing communication easily. It'll take some remarkable coincidence for us to completely lose communication. So that's good. Okay, that'll do for now. So this is situated. Let me get back to the tug, which will handle the rest of the rendezvous with the... Well, I don't know. Maybe we should uh, bring this thing's orbit down first. I don't want the tug to have to lift its orbit up. There's the Pioneer module. It's sort of in a somewhat different orbit. Well, there's a encounter of sorts. Well, 190 meters per second is not bad. And this will be lower, so that 190 meters per second will be the tug dropping its orbit, which is generally a good idea. Well, I think we'll take 8 kilometers for now. Okay, so this is ready to go. Time to close approach one day. Let me switch over to the tug and um, 
I'll probably time warp with Mars Trans Vehicle 2 just so that it gets its water recycled. And. But I want to create a maneuver for the tug so that I don't forget about it. Okay, we are approaching Mars Quest Module for the Rendezvous Burn. Well, hopefully the combination of these two will be able to reach the station. I don't know exactly how the Delta V will work out, but probably this is enough. There's a good argument to be made that maybe I should just put the tug on this side and then dock this side to the station module. Okay, we are docked. Now we have to figure out how to rendezvous with Pioneers, the Pioneer Station module. There's a Pioneer module on the ground too, that's a service module, that's different. So, I have to distinguish between the two. Okay, so that's the Pioneer Station module. Uh, we have not quite a tangency on this side. We can lift our orbit up to get one. And then we'll have to bring the apoapsis down Let's see how much it's going to cost to bring the apoapsis down. I mean, we're talking about a thousand meters per second. Um, maybe we should do that part first since we're already here. That's a relative speed of 500 and 588 to bring it down as much as we do there. Tug's engines are actually blowing right at the solar panel. We'll retract these two solar panels. Um, I don't know why it doesn't show um, this engine active, but okay. They certainly are active. That's probably down to a configuration error on my part. I made, didn't show resource consumption. I'd be surprised if I didn't, but whatever. Okay, okay, don't, don't, go, don't go everywhere. Okay, uh, we'll leave it there and we'll have a correction at Apoapsis. Which is hopefully not too long away, oh, just two hours, that's fine. Uh, yep, uh, less than a kilometer. Okay, rendezvous in an hour and 20 minutes. I feel like I don't see this area of Mars very much, this, this plane here. Very interesting. Always seem to catch the Valles Marinera side. Uh, you know what? Time to control from here, actually. Well, it doesn't seem like a zero roll orientation. Well, no, I guess because the solar panels on this module are in the form of an X, this does make sense. Though I don't like how that antenna is with respect to everything else, so maybe we'll put the this at a 45 degree angle too. Um, or you know what, maybe opposite, 225. On one hand it's not great having the largest thrusters right at the center of the station. Um, on the other hand, these are also reaction wheels, so in that respect, it's not too bad. The curious thing about this station is, is, of course, it's smaller than the transfer vehicles or the supply vessels, so I guess having its larger thrusters at its center line might not be a bad thing in that it might have to do the docking. So that's a thought. And in fact, that might be an interesting thing to do. I don't know how much fuel I want to spend rendezvousing everything together, or what, how much we should just leave uh, in its own little orbit, but probably we should try and get as much together as possible. Of course, this follows the pattern with my um, 
Beyond History series where we basically brought everything together at one point. Just for show. This isn't a small thing, I mean 31 tons, but I mean it's not even, as as far as its internal volume it's not even salient size I think. So a lot to expand upon. But it's got the airlock, I, um, it doesn't have the hydrazine, that's annoying. I thought I would have put the hydrazine on here, but I guess I must have forgotten. Oh well. I mean, I definitely, during the build process, thought about putting hydrazine on here, but I guess I didn't get down to that, so they can't really EVA out from there right now. Now, uh, as it so happens, our little thrusters here are not blowing at these solar panels, but it's a good question whether we should... I think we'll just leave these... Uh, do we even need... Uh, let me just retract these, I think. I don't think they're necessary right now. And that's just because we've got these thrusters here. I don't know. Uh, like, that would be safe anyway in this case. Uh, probably damage the module or something. Anyway, but here it is in high Mars orbit. And let me think a little bit about what I want to do next. This is Phobos Superlander. It wouldn't be too hard to bring that in and dock it. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, at least everything is more or less in the same plane, unless except for the stuff that we weren't planning to. Uh, wait a sec. Uh, these, these, wait. Those are the satellites, yeah. Uh, these are all in the same plane, so that's all right. Those are communication satellites, that belt there. So Phobos Superlander is there, MTV-2, Supply Vessel-1, but do we want to bring all of them down? Supply Vessel-1 would be pretty easy. It's got a lot of Delta V left. This is the Roadster. The Roadster is a communication satellite now, basically. This Superlander, this Mars Superlander, is sort of the odd one out. Let me take a look at it. Alright, so this is the lander with all the fuel in. And it's got parachutes, but I'm sort of tempted to not use those parachutes and just use the fuel to slow down and land. That will make landing a lot easier on me. It's sort of tough to figure out how much thrust I should use in my head when we have the parachutes going. It just messes up the numbers. So, and so I should probably, like, um, cut the chutes at some point and just use thrust to land. Uh, on the final phase that'll make it a little bit easier for me to control it as well. Though on the whole I think part of the problem is the weakness of the RCS thrusters on these stages. I didn't add the RCS thrusters down here and these are way too weak to control something that's 35 tons or a little bit less because we'll dump the heat shield. So yeah I mean it's probably not gonna work out right especially given recent experience. Uh, we would like to land and south, uh, which makes this periapsis not the most useful one right now. Uh, if we take a look at Scansat, I mean, there's a little bit of ore in uh, around the poles, but our scanners haven't really caught a whole lot of ore in the northern hemisphere. It's mostly in the southern hemisphere here. So, like, right where we are right now is good, it seems like, from the map. But, uh, yeah, that's our apoapsis side. But we could still manage it. Uh, I could go to periapsis and pull the orbit down into something circular. We've got enough fuel for that. We don't need all this fuel to land. I fully fueled it just to see its dynamics through the atmosphere. But, you know, we captured, so I got some sense of that. Um, I think I'll just dump the heat shield and use... Because I need to dump the heat shield if we're going to use the engines anyway. And we'll just use the engines to slow down, I think. <laughs> it might be a bad idea, it might be an okay idea, we'll see. But we've got the 4,000 meters per second to use. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll just decouple the heat shield now. Who knows, Pro possibly a bad strategy, probably a bad strategy. At least we don't have any Kerbals on board. 
Well, I mean, the good thing will be making it lighter before we actually touch down. That's probably an, a good thing. And then we'll try and drill for fuel to fuel it up again. If we actually get to that part, you know. Okay, so uh, actually surface retrograde. And let's ignite. The downside is these engines, again, are limited to the 10 ignitions. And uh, that's not the thing. We've got 8 left now. So it's not a super reusable thing right now. We'll need to figure out about those engines, whether I feel comfortable about giving them more ignitions or not. They're not pretty, and they're not very high performance. They're only doing 337 seconds ISP with methane and oxygen. So, you know, there's an argument to be made that they're fairly low performance, which means low chamber temperature, low wear and tear. So obviously we'll be getting less drag. We might get more heating on the way down. We'll have to see. So we're here. We probably want to land around here somewhere. Still in daylight would be good. This this patch right here would be nice. If I had the ability to like edit the action groups on the fly like we do in more recent, what is this one anyway? Operational workshops uh, like we do in uh, 1.8. KSV 1.8, then maybe. I would try the parachutes and try and add the ability to cut them as well. I mean, we are going pretty fast, and I don't know how much drag is going to help or hurt. Okay, so we're only on internal comms. We'll have those three satellites helping out. Inside the atmosphere, the fact that the atmosphere is pushing up on us will settle the fuel down automatically, but out here we can't rely on that. So we need to use some rotational effort. Okay, well, we're, we've entered the atmosphere. And seems like a blue region to me, so anywhere around here will do. We're at the lower latitudes. At this point, uh, we'll have to wait for the atmosphere to push on us to sell the fuel down. So that's not great, but as soon as it does, we'll start slowing down. Uh, communication lines are stretched on that side, but then there's a good satellite on this. Oh, that's the Roadster. The Roadster is helping. Roadster is helping for the lower latitudes. Hopefully, it'll stay there. There you go. Roadster was useful. Okay, the fuel's already been settled down by the atmosphere. I'll start applying thrust at 30 kilometers above the ground just to have a benchmark. I don't know, I think these are a bit underpowered. A lot underpowered, we'll see. This is making me nervous again. I'll probably pop the drogue chutes if I can. Okay, well, I better try. Uh, let me just arm all the chutes. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, we've got some droginess. More droginess. I guess main shoots too. Gear, obviously. I mean, there's just so much uh, wobble. Uh, and uh, look how the shoots are going. I, I really need to be able to cut those. Uh, look at the horizontal speed. 
That's what determines whether we're going to tip or not, after all. But I guess I've got a little, little bit more luxury to figure this out with all this fuel. I'm just going to keep the engines going, of course. Again, a lot of this is down to my failure to put good RCS on the fuel stage, the fuel part of this, instead of just the capsule thrusters. Capsule thrusters are only supposed to use during re-entry kind of thing, right? They're not supposed to be used right now anyway. I mean, to help with docking, I, I placed them so that they would be okay to help with docking too. They're not like Apollos, but still, it's awkward. They don't even have downward facing ones. Oh, don't go down. Oh god. I hate when I have to reignite. Oh, oh, don't hop. Don't hop. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. Sorry for clearing my throat there, but wow. Okay, well, we're here. God, it took a lot of fuel. Um, but, you know, we had it. Let's see if we can do the things. Let's... And we don't have much sun here right now. Okay. And now the electric charge is being consumed quite a lot. The radiators consume power too. This is probably gonna be dead in daylight. But why don't we go ahead and let it extract ore from that one drill and wait the 12 hours. We don't have anything else pressing at the moment. I would rather wait with the transfer vehicle, but we'll go with this for now. Maybe I should have gotten it to the Pioneer module, but we don't have a way of uprighting that, so. Okay, now it's in daylight, but it's not producing enough power. Output 0.169 kilowatts? Pretty sure it's supposed to be more than that. This sun basically overhead. I thought these panels were like two kilowatts already. And then of course half because we're on Mars and all, but still they should be able to produce more. Um, so start ore drill. How much more overhead is that? A little bit more. These aren't like the stock drills. I had uh, redone them based on other information. Mainly from Robert Zubrin's book. But the rate at which fuel can be produced is fairly limited. It's supposed to take months, right? So let's say start ISRU. Well, we need both methane and oxygen. Let's just start methane. Um, 5% load. Well, not the most efficient thing, is it? But the ore is being consumed and methane is being produced. But yeah, we don't have enough power. Um, I'm going to take a look at this in the VAB. And check it against this 0.167 kilowatts. For now, I'm going to... Because th this will eventually die on me if I leave it like this. So I'll just um, go ahead and... Let me see what effect retracting the radiators completely will have. No, this all, this, the load here is going down, so the thermal efficiency is going down, so I guess. Okay, stop drill and retract. Still doesn't seem to be recharging. Uh, well, I guess the ISR unit needs to be stopped. Okay, there we go. Alright. I mean, it's got substantial batteries. It could, you know, once it's fully recharged, start trying that again for a little while. Its power draw seemed to be like maybe 2% 2, 2 kilowatts. So that's a hundred thousand let's say a hundred thousand seconds just to be round about it. That's like a full day. But of course the nighttime side the draw will be much well I don't know much more maybe a little bit more. It ought to be much more, but the uh, it's complicated. Let's go to VAB and take a look at this and see what the solar panels are supposed to be doing, these uh, XT3 solar panel array Mark 1s. So as you can see, I had the celestial body set for Mars on this thing, 
uh, so that I could see the power output at PE and AP on each solar panel. It says each one, the worst is 700 watts and the best is 1000 watts at Mars. If we change this to Earth, whoops, um, Earth 3 kilowatts and 2.9 kilowatts. So, I mean, I don't know why it has such little power output at Mars. Maybe we'll have to wait until like noontime. Maybe it's just at too oblique an angle at Mars. But it didn't seem that way. It should be getting pretty good solar output even at that sun angle. And so I'm a little bit worried that I'm not going to be getting good numbers. But yeah, I mean, obviously I did check that we had enough solar panel re. Um, though just now, when I uh, changed it, now it's giving a larger number for Mars. It might be taking into account the scale now, because, um, yeah, if it only uh, goes by like 100% scale, obviously I tweak scaled it up. Um, this might be the 100% scale, whereas uh, these numbers that I just went back to, maybe the 166% scale? Maybe. Either way, there should be enough power, so um, I don't know. Yeah, they definitely they definitely should not be producing only 170 watts. At this point, there are a lot of possible steps we could take. I could, for instance, rendezvous the Phobos Super Lander with Mars Transfer Vehicle 2, and maybe with one of the tugs bring it in, because I don't think the Phobos Super Lander on its own could get there. But um, I think what I'm actually going to do is try and rendezvous the supply vessel with Mars Transfer Vehicle 2, Partly because that'll help refuel Mars Transfer Vehicle 2 so that it can get itself into a lower orbit. Right now it's pretty extreme, right? This is a very long orbit and also it's higher than Deimos' orbit. So it's very inconvenient for further activities. I want to transfer the Kerbals, um, well possibly one Kerbal into the Phobos Superlander, another Kerbal into the station maybe, occupy the station for a little bit if there's enough nitrogen. Um, so. They need to move back and forth between things. We could use the lander on the transfer vehicle right now to move them about, or we could actually just use the Lynx spacecraft that we have on there, right? I mean, it's got the fuel reserved for return, uh, just in case for emergencies to uh, get back down to the Earth. But we could top it off with fuel, with the fuel in here. Oh, uh, well, I mean, it's not great right now, to be honest. But um, this is going to be just hanging out in Mars orbit. This isn't going back, this supply vessel. So we could exhaust it of fuel and just use it for activities around Mars right now. And that wouldn't be a bad idea. But, uh, well, it depends on how you look at it. I mean, actually bringing it back and topping it off with stuff would not be bad either. So maybe I'll bring it back after all. We'll think about it. Uh, probably will not bring it back with the whole load of food, water, and oxygen. Some of that we probably want to transfer into the station and some of it uh, we will be transferring into Mars tr Transfer Vehicle 2. So, yep. Anyway, first let's match planes with Mars Transfer Vehicle 2. That's part of what this maneuver here does. And then bring our orbit down. That's what that maneuver around there does. And uh, part of the reason we want to bring the orbit down is because we're out of phase with Mars Transfer Vehicle 2 right now. This will give us nice tangencies. And then we'll probably want to actually have Mars Transfer Vehicle 2 bring its orbit down to meet us at some point. Meet us halfway a bit. Uh, this uh, bring our orbit from there down to here is not that much delta V actually. It's about 110 meters per second. It's a lot more delta V to bring it down from Deimos orbit down to a low a Mars orbit, so really just bringing it down to Deimos orbit shouldn't cost us too much, but it will save us a lot of time because right now this is too long an orbit, five day orbit. So, anyway, let's do this first and RCS on. I'll just do it with the ion engines, so however long that takes. We won't be able to fix all of the inclination here. Okay, uh, 1.4 is as low as it goes. Okay, so that's that. 
And this says in 32 days. I don't want to wait. I think that was for other reasons. Let me replot that. We'll see how long that's going to take. I'm going to hop back to Transfer Vehicle 2 so that we time warp with it, and then I'll come back to this again. One thing I'm not sure about is whether if we transfer the Kerbals out of this, whether that will help with the stress because it's a different environment. They're getting to hop out and do something else and whether just being confined in the same vessel is more stressful or whether it'll increase their stress to be in a different uh, vessel and it yeah whether it'll be positive or negative for them I don't know they seem to have a bit of residual rotation here hmm. but yeah stress is the big thing right now 18 percent uh, somebody had uh, wondered about, we do have an inflatable module here. This is the um, Bigelow B330 here. So yeah, we do have that space. Technically, their living space encompasses um, the Lynx spacecraft itself, uh, this Lynx capsule, uh, this module, which is a crew module, uh, this, this module, which is a hardened crew module, and the inflatable module here. So that's their proper living space, if you will. Okay, trying to do an ion engine burn solely to bring down our apoapsis was not feasible. We just didn't have enough time near periapsis. It wouldn't have been very accurate. So I'm going with uh, non-ion engine burn here. And we'll see how this goes. Yeah, since there, this doesn't have any living space, it's full up on nitrogen, which is good. Probably everything needs to be replenished with nitrogen. I think the MTV2 says it has plenty left. It says six years. So maybe it's okay. Okay, so again, I just want this side to be tangent to MTV2, and that looks okay to me. So, again, since we're not using the ions for it, I don't want to overdo this particular burn. We could use the ions and do subsequent burns too. We don't have to rush it. All right, I'm gonna take a look at MTV2 and see what I can plot with it. Okay, so here we have a tentative option where I'm going to do one burn right here close up to our descending node with respect to supply vessel one, and that'll be 100 meters per second or so. And then this will allow an encounter out here an intersection point that would cost 152 meters per second and pretty wide separation but maybe we could fine-tune that most of what we're doing down here is an inclination burn so we'll see whether that's worthwhile to do or not I and mean, we'll try that and then we'll see whether the actual meetup is in the best place or not well we really didn't get to rendezvous Mars transfer vehicle 2 and the supply vessel in orbit of Earth, but we certainly have to rendezvous them in orbit of Mars, otherwise the supply vehicle isn't particularly useful, is it? Uh, so, yep, this should be interesting. Okay, well, it's looking like this is going to take quite a few passes, because we've only done a small fraction of the 100 meter per second burn, and then we have to do a rendezvous burn. Um, Probably I want to do more of this with the supply vessel, it's looking like at this point. Yeah, this is not going to be easy to rendezvous these two huge vessels. And let's not talk about docking them, which I would have to do because... Well, I guess I don't have to have to do. It's possible to just grab the quest module here, dock it to the supply vessel, grab the supplies, and then dock it back over here. But or something like that, or with the fuel, you know, do some similar maneuver, but it'd certainly be more epic to dock the whole assembly together. We'll see, but it might be too painful, and I don't want to, like, crash them into each other and cause a huge explosion, so... Yeah, you know, gotta be cautious about such things. But yes, I think I'll end it here, given the nice view of Mars, as we steadily approach periapsis. And I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.